Hello and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I am Dr. Abstract and in this tutorial we're going to have some fun again <laughs> because I just did the whole tutorial with my microphone turned off. Sigh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's a little bit different. We're going to take a look at the history of uh, this guy, Dr. Abstract, working in Flash. So what types of things have been made in Flash and how those relate to Zim. So you get sort of a better idea of what can be made in Zim inside of Adobe Animate. All right, let's go to the Zim site now, although we're really wanting to check out this other site called danzen.com. Uh, note that it's not secure. Dan Zen has, oh, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of pages. It's huge. It's been going since the 90s. And most of the things on it, well, some of the things were made in Director. And then most of the things uh, have been made in Flash. It's being treated as a museum here. You can, this is the map to the museum, and you can drag it around like so. And by the way, this drag, so this was made in Zim. It was one of the first things made in Zim. Um, this drag is, is snaps like that, so you can put up, and that's built right in to the drag. It's got some parameters to do that, so you can do that in Animate 2 uh, with a big picture that's bigger than, or a big object of some sort that's bigger than your bounds, and then it will snap in like that. So one of the first things that was made is right here. So, uh, well, uh, is the steps, and we can go take a look at the steps, but just to mention what we're seeing here in the map, these are all exhibits. So 52, we did 52 exhibits, a whole year of exhibits. Uh, this Dan Zen character turned half century old, invited all his friends to a party, had uh, digital things as well as physical inventions. Anyway, we made this museum. And then for the next year, it didn't really change. And we decided to do 52 exhibits, uh, one each week for a whole year. And it became this map. So how it first began was in the steps. So let's go there now. This was the first CreateJS app that I made. Um, let's see, not, not in uh, Adobe Animate or Flash, but it is CreateJS, and that's what Adobe Animate exports to. And what you can do, check this out. Ooh, isn't that neat? So here we are dragging the steps, and that, that will go back to the Danzen Expo. And then all these people are, have tickets and they're waiting to get into the Dan Zen Museum, or you can use a scroll wheel here. And there's many, many. But anyway, there's a ticket that goes into the museum. So whoosh, in we go. Uh, where you can tour and explore. So the tour has various, uh, the formation tour. We started in Director. Dan Zen was the name of the site in Director. So before Dan Zen, it was somebody else. These are all personas that have been built on, <laughs> on top. Um, but uh, the formation tour talks about um, Director and then Flash, et cetera, back in the early days of the web in the 90s. And then the creativity tour. There's a creativity framework at creativityframework.com. Uh, you might want to check that out. A biography tour, a nodism tour, the philosophy of nodism based on all this, uh, object-oriented coding based on object-oriented coding. You guys are nodists, part of the nodist colony. And then a coding tour. Why don't we take a look at that? A marketing tour. We did a lot of um, interactive advertising in, in Flash or in Animate. So I'm going to the coding tour here. These are the rooms in the museum and thoughts on coding. This was an e-learning app, the left-hand side, for instance. These are the two sides are really the same app. So what happens is you see words in your code. This is learning how to code. And if you press on the words, then the words become colors. So if, you're, uh, if you, you know, are more visual, you can follow the colors through at any time. You can press on things, follow the colors or the numbers, and step through to make different color purses. Okay, so that's an e-learning app made in Flash. Here is a mystery, those murder mystery type things. Uh, nearly sold this to Microsoft, what is it called? Not Surface, Microsoft um, Sidewalk, it was called. It was like the AOL of Microsoft at the time. Anyway, 16 colors, ooh, nice. <laughs> and a murder mystery where you click on characters. This was made in Director. Uh, it talks about how to use arrays to handle the mysteries or the AI of it all. 
And so I won a Canadian New Media Awards for this, this type of work here. Um, some coding basics. So if you're new to coding, you might want to come in here and take a peek. Um, moving on through, though, the Dan Zen coding in 2002, I won the Canadian New Media Awards Programmer of the Year for work like this. This is Austin Powers' Golden Ball. Let's see, was this Flash? Yes, I think the Opartica, which is what this is based on, Opartica was the world's number one opart making tool for, for about 10 years, in, according to Google. Um, but anyway, this was an adaptation of that, and Opartica was the first thing that I coded in Flash after Director. And coming on down, motion gaming. So all these are flash-based. A uh, little Chufu, you don't want to get the, the gi uh, of his clothes dirty. He's on the top of a train. He's jumping over little train puffs. Uh, Dan Zen was peaceful. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of quite peaceful things. Uh, Con Gone was a kind of neat game where it's a mask. It was made in flash. It's a mask and these cons are trying to escape and you have to click on them. Remade that in Zim. So some of these I've remade in Zim. And I'll show you an example of that uh, coming up. These are early days. So director, going back to director, here's some things in Flash. Flash, there was an app called Droner where you control your friends. It was multi-user back in Flash. Uh, we now have multi-user, by the way, this is multi-user out here, the Dan Zen map. If you, if you were to come here at the same time, you would see somebody else's ring or um, anybody who comes here gets a ring. And the more they press on these examples, all these things are exhibits you can press on, uh, the more rings they get. So when I show students this, uh, there's a whole bunch of people here, which is exciting. And, and then some people, as soon as they start to see rings, they go, oh my God, I'm getting rings. And, and they just keep pressing, 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 and they get all these big, huge rings. They're like a peacock or something moving about. So that uses the Zim multi-user. Um, back here, this is Droner, this was multi-user with Flash, and you control your friends to get them to do something, or a friend. So it could be multiple people controlling one of the friends, and, and they the friend had at a party, for instance, and uh, so this is like everybody's together in the same room <laughs> kind of control. Or you could use it for Flash mobbing, possibly one person controls many. Um, so these are some stats on, on code that I was using at the time in Flash to make Hangy, which, well, why don't we see this more visually, but those are some of the, the mobile ones. I'll show you where we can actually visually look at those. Uh, that would be back in the museum. There's a couple ways in. One, if we head back here, this was the coding tour, uh, if we hit explore here, then that would take us there, or right from the map itself. This big long line is the Kerputnik conveyor. And if you press on the big long line, here we are in the Kerputnik conveyor where things are broken down by alphabet, age, and uh, category. So if we look for mobile, for instance, um, up comes the conveyor, and this was one of our first HTML5 mobile apps called Altura. Uh, interactive storytelling app, and here was the Dan Zen site, Dark. So Dan Zen's had many, many fronts to it. Many of those fronts were in Flash. Uh, now our fronts tend to be HTML, but with Zim in them. Um, anyway, so back in the, the, the days of, uh, what would you call it, motion graphics fronts, you know, like, uh, I'll sh maybe show you some of those if, if, if you want. But this was an HTML5 one where you're in the dark. What do you do? And it relates something to Dan Zen. Anyway, coming on through, Droner was the one where you're controlling your friends. Lots of interface here to be able to move about, almost like a joystick here. Let's see if we can make that a bit bigger. Almost like a joystick here. There's packs and party packs, things sliding up and down. So all of this was made in Flash. Could very easily be made in Zim or Adobe Animate and, and, and Zim now. Uh, scrolling down, here's a game called Gobstop where you would press these balls and each time you press the ball it would get a ring and once you get 10 rings it clears them. If you clear two at the same time special things happen. If Every time you click it goes the opposite way so you have to keep all these balls on the screen and so just a fun game, easy to make in Zim, easy to make in, in Adobe, uh, Adobe Animate and uh, well sorry, easy. it was easy to make in Flash Easy to make now, too, in Adobe Animate and Zim. 
Uh, here's Hangy. So Hangy was a mobile app where you could express yourself, uh, and I would wear those at conferences, etc. Uh, there's uh, there's an example that was a little bit bigger with a tablet on there. It had an invisible grid interface. So that was made in. <laughs> I'm starting to forget now. That was made in Flash. Basically, everything in 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 this museum was made just before we started um, using CreateJS and Zim. As a matter of fact, the, as mentioned, the front steps was CreateJS. The map was put on afterwards, and it was made in Zim. Here's uh, an app where you go try to hunt pictures of, of hipsters, and you can crop them and upload them and tag them. Definitely could uh, build all this in Zim. We've got excellent work for, for doing things like uh, meme makers, for instance, where people can upload a picture really, really easy. We've got the loader. It makes it so easy. You just easily upload the picture. It's like two lines of code. They upload the picture. You can draw on it, add things to it, and then one line of code to save it, and it saves it out to their device. So uh, excellent, uh, easy to use. Maybe we should show you how to do that in the next tutorial, right? Make a meme, a meme maker. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So hopefully I'll remember that. Uh, Swoodle, uh, a finger drawing kind of app with with a difference filter blend mode put on it. We can definitely do that in uh, Zim, no problem. That was so fun. I, I made lots of Swoodles, and everybody loves Swoodle on the mobile world. Touchy uh, was our game, our app. Our, it's a mobile mediated game, so it's the game is outside the mobile device, but we just use the device to um, make it uh, provide a target. So these two are playing touchy right now. They're trying to touch a target on the other person's phone. And this got on Dragon's Den and it was quite successful. They played it, it was fun. I didn't get the money, but uh, it was fun. Dragon's Den is like a shark's tank in, in shark's tank I think is the States or is that British? I can't, I can't remember. Dragon's Den is our Canadian version of it. So Touchy actually was remade. This was the Flash version, but Touchy, and it was Adobe Air, so it was on mobile apps, Apple mobile apps, et cetera, and Android. Um, then Apple, you know, every single year, Apple wants some sort of thing updated or whatever, so we, we just uh, gave up eventually keeping our Apple thing alive. Tilty was a follow-up game. It was actually probably a better game because you didn't go after the phone directly. You're holding it in the air like this. These two are playing Tilty and it can be played with more than one person. And then you jostle each other in the physical world, in real life, and try to make the, a ball sort of go off the target in a sense. And uh, that's that one. Uh, Trippy was put in front of the face in a sense and would apply blend modes to what the camera is seeing. Uh, we could do that too. Wavy would make theremin sounds. We can do that as well. Uh, let's go back up though to Touchy, which was remade in Zim if we launch this. So here's the, the, the mini site. So this thing right here is an animation. This is Zim uh, right here embedded in HTML, I guess. Yeah, the top's HTML. This boxes Zim. And what I'm going to do is press on the web version right here. And basically this is viewing it in the web, but it could be in the mobile store as well. So this is a remake of that touchy game. And note the blob work here. So this is a, a Zim blob and it would normally have Bezier curves, but we've hidden the Bezier curves and we've animated the, the Bezier curves to make that you know, fairly easy, nice effect. I go to hit play and that comes down. And then what happens is the blob starts working along here at the bottom. So it's kind of got this neat sort of look to it. Touch and hold the target on your opponent's screen to take away their points. And we hit next. And then press the go button at the same time to sync play. So we've got two players. We go one, two, three, and we go, go. And so now targets appear on both mobile devices. And if somebody comes to my device and presses here, oh no, they're taking away my points. And if they press in the middle, it takes away the points twice as fast. And if their thumb goes off, it doesn't. If it goes back on or a finger or whatever, more points, oh no, oh, and there's, there's the timer. So the game only goes for 20 seconds. And I got 64. Did I win, tie, or lose? Oh, I lost. So I won two and I have two losses, and then I can play again. 
Okay, so this type of thing, that's the Zim Pages. Perhaps in the future I could show you Pages as well in a tutorial, which easily swipes from one page to another. And that's what's sort of controlling all of this app. It's in Zim Pages. There's also really cool transitions. Uh, let me show you that back on the Zim site. So here's Zim. I'm going to go to Examples. And then, let's see, I think probably Collections is the easiest place to find it on right here, Zimcat. So we introduced the new pages. Let's see, where can we find that? Actually, the, the puzzle thing, this, this cat uses Zim pages as well. So if I arrow like that, there's the effect. Or if I swipe as well, there's the effect. Arrows, you see those bubble effects. But one of the new things in pages, let's see, that's it right there, is um, the emitter. So that's got an emitter now sort of as an effect. Those were squares. You see the squares versus, oh, that was a different effect altogether. There's a, an emitter kind of explosion thing. There are lines and here are bubbles. Cool, huh? So pages can have those effects on them or they don't have to, but um, you can do that. And pages allow you easily to swap uh, various containers. We actually, we put up for a long time, both in, in ActionScript and in early days of Zim with people going, how do you make a page? And we go, make a new container and put the things in the container. Sometimes you guys would just make a new movie clip and put the things in a movie clip, right? And you go, how do you make a new page? How do you make a new page? Finally, we said, okay. And we made a new page class in Zim or a page class in Zim uh, that is really just a container with a background color. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. There's your page. So now when people ask, how do you make a page? You can say, make a new page <laughs> and add things to it, <laughs> just like you would a container. Ha, 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 ha. So this has probably fallen asleep. It's multi-user, so we make it fall asleep after a bit. Uh, what else did I, I want to show you? Oh, yeah, I mentioned that I was going to show you some of the... Uh, versions of Zim, which come under meta here, meta category. Uh, there's Agency Zen. It was an early interactive advertising uh, type thing that we were doing. Um, Chakra. So this was not Flash. It's HTML based. This was the height of technology at the time, the animated GIF or the rollover. <laughs> but uh, each of these things and there was a game. Then that's that one here. This was made in Flash. It was called Rich Deck. And we unfortunately we can't load these because you know we're in the browser right now and Flash is gone. But Rich Deck was made in Flash where you had the iconomizer right here. Ooh. And you could scroll those icons. And that could be any size. And it was really easy to add icons. But also you could pick up that bar right there and pick up the bar almost like a progress bar or not a progress bar. What's it called? These things at the side, a scroll bar but it just was like a thin bar there that would tell you how far down you're scrolled. Um, on the left, you had a couple options to pull up stuff, different things here in the middle. But the idea is you, you also could zoom in on these things, set a slideshow down here uh, and various other, find information about it and then choose different ones along here. So there's categories. This was called the Deck of Creations. It was like a bunch of cards, like a card deck. Each of the Dan Zen interfaces have a logo like that. As, as you can see, there's the sort of the back to the beginning one, the pixel sort of side one. I don't know if I show, oh yeah, that was the board. That was sort of like my, my loose school kid signature. But I then went more abstract, I guess. It spells Dan going up and Zen coming down like that. Um, but each iteration of Dan Zen, then each new front had a different signature. So we'll keep on going here. Problem with this one is it was too easy to fill up. Like you could, or not easy to fill up. You could, you could just keep on f putting stuff in it. More, 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 more. It really didn't matter. So it was around for too long. <laughs> you know, some of the other ones had limited amount of space. This was the last one that was done in Flash, I believe. Uh, it was more of an umbrella site. So here's all the creations. That's where all of the games ended up going. Whereas in this one, all the games were inside here and it was that was it. That's all you had. Um, 
this one was an umbrella site where the games were in there. We realized we were doing a bunch of other stuff, but it worked in parallax. So as you move your mouse and Zim's got parallax as well. So if you want to use parallax and animate, it's really easy to do. You just add whatever you want to move or shift into a parallax uh, layer. And then uh, Zim will parallax all that stuff for you. So there's a good, a good number of examples on how to do parallax in Zim. It's a control. We might want to take a look at that sometime too in these tutorials. But anyway, these things would move around a bit in parallax and, oh, all of the leaves animated to the lines. So they all, all started off, the whole thing was leaves or blossoms. And then, then the blossoms would animate to the nearest line. So we can figure out where a certain color is, for instance, and just animate to it. So that was a neat effect that could be done in, in Zim as well and animate. Uh, this little thing was the, Kerputnik, the first Kerputnik cam, which was sort of a viewer. It, it was a big, long picture. So this was a big, long, hand-drawn picture, and you would move with these little controls. No problem to do that now in Adobe Animate and Zim. No problem at all. Uh, here were... What were this? This was links. Don't worry about that. Then this was the Pagoda of Games, and it was sort of prime. Uh, that's a shame that yeah, no, it's, it's not there. I don't even know. Do I have an HTML version? Does that work? I guess it kind of works. Yeah, okay, good enough. Uh, this was the sort of straight HTML version where these menus were here, but in Flash, they animated. So this one was small, or this one was big. This one was small. And when you press on this one, this one would get big. The other one would like zoom kind of right out of a view and another one would come in because there were all these different menus right here. And that's where we put the games. This one filled up though. You see what we mean? There's only so much room on each menu. And so once we ran out of room on, on the menus, we had to make a new interface. But uh, this was a motion graphics interface that was quite impressive in Zim. Could also be uh, done without problems these days. Where were we? Pogoda of games reviews. This was the very first Dan Zen thing ugh, 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 uh, back in just a black and white thing, although it had a pretty cool coincidence. Okay, it looks like that's uh, an ad for Droner there. Can we get to the top? That was it for the meta section for the different sort of intros um, to Dan Zen. I had mentioned Opartica, so under, would that be under Tools? We'll see. Or I could look under O, Altura. Mail, ooh, changing mail. You could change people's mail after you sent it to them. <laughs> chat nap was a chat game where you would try and catch your friends. If your friend was uh, said that they were online and then you message them and they don't answer, you could send a link to them. And if they didn't answer that link or didn't go to the link and do something in five minutes, then you got a point and they would lose a point. Uh, but if they did answer it, you know, like, ah, oh, I am here then uh, you would lose a point and they would get one. That was fun. Kitty Tartan, you would drop... Oh, this is the kind of meme maker type thing. This is Doggy Tartan, actually. But uh, Kitty Tartan was the one that we went with primarily. You would drop a picture of a cat onto your app here and it would make a tartan based on the colors. We could do that quite easily with Zim now as well. Up, just upload a picture, grab what colors are in the picture primarily, and then make a tartan based, based on the picture. This is Opartica right here, and um, it was, like I said, the on, uh, world's number one online opera making tool for quite some time. This is Opartica 1. Is there Opartica 2? That's Swoodle, Tapple, a place where you predict polls while you vote on them. Yassise yes, this was oh, so, so unfortunate. Yassise yes, was you could um, basically put words to the video. So you would type in words here at the time that the video was on. I did this for a CD-ROM a CD on Marshall McLuhan back in 1995. Did that. That was one of the features that I introduced for that coding and director. And I did it again here in Flash, yes, he say. And I swear it was like a month after uh, Google came out with uh, something similar on, on their uh, videos. And I was like, oh, okay, well, oh, well. Maybe it wasn't Google. Maybe it was... Um, that, uh, what's the learning, the videos, the learning thing, lynda.com or something. Anyway, whatever. Uh, an alarm, there's Rich Deck being used for other things. So Rich Deck was also used, remember that tool right there for the front of the Dan Zen card trading tool thing? It was also used for to play Rich Deck, was, which is a game that was as complicated as eBay. You had 
you had things like franchises, percentages based on that. You could own companies, trade franchises, blah, blah, blah. blah. Every time you visit, you, there would be different four or five different types of rewards. It was a lot of fun. So you could buy like a mansion on the moon or a lemonade factory or lemon, the lemonade factory in theory would pipe lemonade to people's houses. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Um, this was called Zen Dots, which was a timeline thing, again, made in Flash. So you could enter some data in XML, I think it was at the time. <laughs> XML, ooh. And then it would make a timeline that you could swipe and slide and contract and expand. So that could be made. This was called Zen Mix, which allowed you to mix interactive works. Flash was great for that. Oh my God. So for instance, Opartica. Uh, is any of these Opartica? I don't see one. But what I would do is I would put Opartica as the background. So that's one interactive tool. And I would mix that in with a Zen Pan, which panned, panned things. Uh, and then put video on top uh, and stuff. So this would allow you to online blend stuff. I'm not sure. Uh, we can do video in Zim. Let's see. I'm not sure. I don't think I can mix. Flash might still be able to do that. Maybe not. Like take a Swift file and load it into another Swift file. We used to be able to do that, believe it or not. Isn't that cool? Like a Flash app and load it into another. We'd have to probably use iframes or something like that now. Wouldn't uh, I think it works quite the same way. Ah, okay. Well, you know, there we go. That's Zen Picture. It was a square. So imagine that. Here, here's Zen Picture. You see this little Z here with the camera, almost like a camera. But basically, it was a square viewer. And the pictures, if they were vertical, would scroll this way. And then if they're horizontal, it would scroll this way. And believe it or not, it works. Imagine a, like a horizontal vertical path. You can lay it out so it never stops. And that could still be done. You could swipe this, change the speed. This Recognize this. That's the iconomizer, a little list of icons that you can scroll through. Um, so that was Zen Picture. We made a lot of things in there and let other people do it. Zen Play was using HTML as a slideshow. Uh, it wasn't in Zim, though. All right, so those are just a bunch of tools, uh, mostly made in Zim, some of them made in Director. There's also some fun gadgets. There were lots of games. Should we know, peek at the games? A Million Clouds made in Adobe Flash. Uh, it, it can quite easily be done now. It used physics at the time. I think it was Box2D, and that's what we use in Zim as well to fly this guy through the clouds. And there were a million clouds. And what would happen is after you fly for a bit, do you see the little guy here down in the corner? After you fly for a bit, it would suck in the cloud into the jetpack to power it. So basically, it was a commentary on uh, renewable energy. You know, we don't, or I guess non-renewable energy. Uh, there were a million clouds, now there aren't anymore. And so the idea was, I don't know what would happen once all the clouds <laughs> were gone. But it was multi-user, so basically it would keep track, or database, not multi-user really. It was database driven, so it would keep track of how many people had sucked clouds. And uh, it, it uses physics to fly around. And we could quite easily do that. It's easy to use physics in Zim and bring them in. We have a, a Zim shim for Adobe Animate so that you can bring in a physics engine quite easily into Adobe Animate as well. There's in the template, we'll do that. And we'll definitely take a look at that in a future tutorial here at Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. Uh, let's see, that was the game where he's jumping, it's Chufu, he's jumping puffs of clouds, peaceful thing. I think I mentioned that. <laughs> I also mentioned that I've done this already. Uh, this is the second time I've done this. I can't remember which stories were which. <laughs> like, oh, well. Uh, an early, um, early multiplayer game called Gorgolon. I love this. Well, anyway, I won't go into it. Long story. You can read the story in the information and see that. Grim Reaper's Age Guesser. We were the number one uh, search result for Grim Reaper for many years. That was fun uh, because the Grim Reaper would guess your age, but you know we don't need Adobe Flash or Zim to do that necessarily. That's just a more HTML based. But we have done we have done some surveys in Zim. Do you want to see a Zim survey, for instance? Uh, let's see, zimjs.com. I think it's just slash survey. Hopefully, let's have a look. Yeah. 
So what level you're at JavaScript coding? So this thing right here is a component in Zim called a, a selector. And it's much like a television would do your selection, right? You remember those things? You've got one on each letter and you can make a grid. Right now this isn't a grid, but that's a selector. So I will say I'm an expert. Down here we have an indicator. These are components in Zim. We also have arrows and all this is hooked up into pages. So the arrows hook up to pages. Note that one's grayed out. And I go arrow. And here the page is only this little bit. The top and the bottom are, are not the page. So it's only this one, another selector. And Zim, great. How many things? This is called a stepper right here. So there we are stepping. And note that uh, we've got a custom font in the stepper. So how many things have I made with Zim? Well, <laughs> lots. Okay. And how many years have you used Zim? As many years as it's going to tell me. <laughs> I guess at the time of this, of this, it was only six years old. How did I find Zim? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> other? If other? Uh, founder. Founder. Aha! Okay, that's a text. Um, note that we just type text onto the canvas. So that's a little bit tricky. That's a text area. We actually have a better way to do that now called an a text input, which is uh, even stronger than the, the overlaid text area. This is overlaid. So watch as we animate this out, it's going to disappear. Whoosh. And, uh, or well, we just cached it. That's right, the page cache, so it doesn't matter. How could we improve Zim? Uh, another big text area there. And I think that's it. Uh, yes, mostly. Yes. Okay. And any final comments, and then it goes to submit. Okay, so that's uh, an example of some Zim survey stuff, but it does make for a nice, colorful, exciting looking survey compared to HTML, I suppose. So you're welcome to do that. But Zim is primarily uh, for more graphical, uh, you know, graphically rich apps of sorts as opposed to information or data apps. But we do have, by the way, we do have, let's see, where should we see that? Back in Zim, if we go under, go up to the top here, whoosh, 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 under the code section and go to libraries, there are extra libraries for socket, for game, physics, 3JS to bring in 3D, uh, pizzazz for that. But there's also Zim base, which talks about how to access uh, PHP as a database and some examples to do that. And so uh, we can certainly make Zim work with data. And there's a whole module in the Zim schools. If we go back to the Zim and go down to the gold bars here, the gold bars under school, for instance. The last lesson here is a big lesson on data. So there's a variety of ways that we can handle data. We can do async, which is asynchronous, or a JSONP one called, oh, what is that called? Um, Sync, I think, or just, uh, I can't remember, a async. Oh yeah, async is JSONP and JSON, JS, no, Ajax. Ajax is the Ajax way. Async is a JSONP way of getting data without reloading the page. And um, then we can send off to data without problems. We've also got bind. Zim bind will bind to data. I don't know if you remember back in the flash days, it got all complicated as it was trying to bind to data as well in the panels and stuff. I'm not sure if you ever used that, but we have a way of binding in Zim as well. So that's some of the more complex parts of it. Well, you know, that was just an overview of types of things that, that I've made. Dr. Abstract, this guy, but as Dan Zen, types of things that are made in the past, how they might relate to things that could be made now. I can tell you after doing uh, this many examples right here under examples, take a look. After doing these many things in just raw Zim, without CreateJS, without, uh, well, I mean, Zim's powered on CreateJS, but without um, Adobe Animate, I've built all of these things uh, over the last eight years or so. And working on the canvas is fantastic, even just on its own. Adobe Animate probably makes it even bigger, better to have um, a nice IDE on the front. But after building all of these things, I tell you, we can do a lot, all right, and have have fun uh, working on it. I hope that you kind of come on in. We make it a lot easier when we're using um, Zim, and certainly a lot easier 
uh, inside. We've got a lot of conveniences for the CreateJS side. So if you're coding in, in um, Adobe Animate, please uh, come take a look. And if this is your first tutorial that you've seen, it's a bit different than the other tutorials. We'll get back into the code later. We'll get back into Animate later. Uh, but if you haven't seen the other tutorials, please do. And where they all kind of stem from is if you go into the code section here under features right here, just go past our normal template. Under features, there is this Zim Shim for Adobe Animate. And uh, I guess we're going to be premiering. Here is the new tutorials button. In the previous tutorials, we had not yet added uh, the tutorials link because we were making them. But now we've made enough that we are promoting it right here at the top. You might recognize that, huh? <laughs> that smiley guy right here. When I was Dan Zen, I had long hair, like a blunt haircut uh, here. But now as Dr. Abstract, uh, that's, that's me. You can find out a lot more about Dr. Abstract uh, as well on Medium under the Learn section here. For instance, if you were interested in that creativity framework, if you scroll on down to where it has articles, meet the medium right here, here's your guide to creative coding on the canvas. And that's a good link. We do some articles on dev, but I don't know, I don't know how much we'll keep that up. But there's a lot of articles on the on medium. Uh, this is one. This article itself is uh, broken down into 12. This is a guide, but broken down into 12 guides. Oh my gosh. So 12 guides all about how to use specific parts of Zim. But also under Dr. Abstract, I'm not sure where this goes, but under uh, Dr. Abstract, we have been making interactive NFTs. We just launched something on interactive animation. Uh, what else do we have? A philosophy of nodism, okay? And there's a whole creativity content and creativity. This one right here is, well, I'll click it because it'll go to the other ones. Welcome readers from your guide to the mechanics of creativity. So uh, you want to start at this one, your guide to the mechanics of creativity. And if I press on that, here it is, the mechanics of creativity. See the steps to create like magic. So if you're interested in creativity or think that what you've seen is a little bit uh, creative, I uh, put some reviews here. There are 52 other, or more than 52 other reviews on the framework. It's actually a bit ridiculous, but uh, you can go to the framework. This is what it looks like and have a look. It's based on the philosophy of nodism. Here are some sketches of that. So anyway, if you want or see a TED talk on creating, much of this creation right here relates back to um, what was being made in Flash, for instance. And here is uh, some examples of the creativity framework and talks about it, as well as your guide to context, flexibility, content, and relevance. So these are the uh, this whole thing is broken into four parts, and those are the, the four-part guides. Okay, this is the introduction to it all. I am Dr. Abstract, formerly Dan Zen, this fellow here in Space Rock Band, doing light shows. Many of the light shows that I do are made in Zim now. They were made in Adobe Animate or Flash. Now I make the light shows in Zim. I just projected, uh, let's see, can I find it? Well, I guess, okay, let's see. Uh, what is that place called? Instagram, let's go there. And there, this light show right here is made in Zim. It animates to sound. And this is uh, Christina from Orfix, uh, well-known in Europe. And this is Patrick from Front 242 uh, from the 80s. They're DJing and, and presenting light shows. That's that's me with my wire crown, the shadow of the wire crown there. <laughs> you probably can't see it there. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's the sh shadow crown. And uh, once again, that light show is animating to their sound. Pretty cool. So still doing all that stuff. I am Dr. Abstract, this fellow here, and uh, we're at Zim, zimjs.com, where you can find out more to make in Adobe Animate. It's been my pleasure to be with you. Hopefully that, that wasn't too weird <laughs> to take a bit of an explore on that. But sometimes it helps to know the types of things that you might want to make, uh, and that can help you make them. All right. Uh, have a great day or night, and I'll talk to you later. So here's looking forward to the next one. What were we going to do in the next one? 
Ah, a meme maker. Okay, so in the next tutorial we'll show you how to upload a picture to Adobe Animate, how to uh, save that picture uh, from the end user, all using the Zim Loader class. Cheers!